trusted news source, ABC6 News at Noon. Today at noon, we begin with breaking news out of Gloucester. Multiple people injured in an attack at a group home there. This all happening about 7.30 this morning at Cove House Adult Residential Facility. ABC 6 News reporter Hector Molina is live at the scene right now with those breaking details. Hector? Well, Doreen, we're told that five people were injured in an incident that took place at this group home behind me here on the intersection of Harmony Hill and Absalona Hill Roads in the Shapacha area of Gloucester. It all took place around 8 o'clock this morning. Now, according to the Gloucester Fire Department, they said five people were injured after a 40-year-old man became physical with staff and other residents here at the Cove House Adult Residential Facility. Now, this facility is owned by the Grodin Network based in Providence. Now, I spoke with someone who works there just minutes ago. They say they're still sorting out what happened with police and the appropriate state agencies, but they can confirm that everyone else in the home is safe at this time. Now, that's what we know as of right now as we receive any new information. We'll bring it to you on air and online at abc6.com. In Gloucester, Hector Molina, ABC6 News. Sure, thank you. We're also following developing news out of Providence today. 95 South was shut down for much of this morning's commute just before exit 21 to Atwells Avenue. A tractor trailer crashed and was jackknifed across all four lanes. This was just after 8 o'clock. All those lanes are now back open. Traffic was diverted to exit 22, snarling traffic back through Pawtucket. State police tell us four cars and the tractor trailer were involved. Police say the tractor trailer rear-ended another car first, then hit another car before crashing into the barrier. Four people were taken to Rhode Island Hospital complaining of pain. Cleanup efforts closed the highway for nearly two hours. The investigation is ongoing. And news we're following new at noon today. Massachusetts State Police captured a man wanted for a new bed for shooting up north in Maine. Police say 29-year-old city resident Tyler Santos was wanted for shooting his ex-girlfriend's new boyfriend in New Bedford back on January 6th. State police determined he traveled to Maine. They tracked him down at a small home in Emden. He was arrested Monday morning in what police describe as frigid conditions. They say Santos ran from the house in a frozen pond before going back inside the house and eventually surrendering. He is charged with assault with a dangerous weapon, among other drug and gun charges. Lifespan is changing visitation policies at its hospitals, and that includes Rhode Island Hospital. Citing declining COVID-19 cases, Lifespan says visitation hours will now be from 2 until 7 in the afternoon at Rhode Island Hospital. Adults can have two visitors at a time and six during their entire stay. Lifespan is still requiring proof of COVID vaccination or a recent negative PCR test before you're allowed in. Also at noon, an ABC6 update in court today. Rhode Island Attorney General Peter Nerona's emergency motion to stay the approval of a utility sale. That hearing is ongoing right now. Rhode Island's Division of Public Utilities recently approved the sale of Narragansett Electric to a Pennsylvania-based company, PPL. National Grid is part of Narragansett. Nerona argues the deal would have, quote, enormous consequences for Rhode Islanders, including worse service and higher utility rates. And happening now, Commerce Secretary and former Rhode Island Governor Gina Raimondo is in the area. She's visiting MIT up in Cambridge today, again pitching the need for more domestic semiconductor chip manufacturing. Those chips are used in cars and became hard to come by during the pandemic. Raimondo was the designated survivor for last night's State of the Union address. Every year, the administration appoints one member of the cabinet who remains outside the House chamber during the State of the Union, just in case disaster strikes. And we're also following world headlines today. The Russian government says it is sending a delegation for a second round of possible peace talks with Ukraine, even as Russian forces intensify their attacks on civilian and government targets. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. This morning, civilians in Ukraine bracing for the worst as Russia's 40-mile military convoy slowly approaches the nation's capital. A senior U.S. official says the Russian convoy could be suffering from a lack of food and fuel, or the slowdown may be a strategic move. 
When it gets to about 10 to 15 miles, then they can begin the shelling of the city that we really, that's our dread there. Videos show Russian forces already stepping up their assault on government buildings and civilian targets. Women and children packing into a makeshift shelter in an underground parking lot as sirens warning of a potential strike blare in the port city of Odessa. <laughs> West of Kyiv, a Russian cruise missile reportedly blasting a hospital and a residential neighborhood. Rescue workers running into the burning homes trying to save lives. Ukrainian officials say the explosion killed at least four people. Russia is committing war crimes. We are following very closely. It's early to say that. The Biden administration saying it's seeing more signs the international financial sanctions are severely impacting Russia's economy though it's unclear if it's impacting Russian President Vladimir Putin's calculus. We are seeing the ruble in a freefall. We are seeing the stock market in Russia has essentially closed. What we have seen is that the, the, the credit rating of Russia is now junk. And Ukraine's former president Poroshenko tells ABC News his country needs more help on the front lines. They're pleading for more armor for their soldiers and weapons like Javelin and Stinger missiles to take down Russian helicopters and tanks. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. To the weather now with a live look outside with our sky cam. It's nice and sunny out there today, a bit warmer than it's been too. Chelsea's in the Weather Center with your first forecast. Hi, Chelsea. Hey, Doreen, good afternoon to you. Hi, everyone. We are seeing temperatures that have come up into the mid 40s with uh, Providence sitting at 46 degrees right now. Breeze out of the northwest does make us feel a few degrees cooler, but all in all, a really nice early March day outside. Most of us have temperatures in that low to mid 40s range at this point. Some of us inching closer into the upper 40s and well above where we were yesterday at this time, anywhere from about 5 to 10 degrees warmer right now compared to yesterday afternoon. And of course, we have perfect sunshine outside right now. Satellite radar image shows you a good bubble of clear skies over Rhode Island and southeastern Mass, but some clouds are increasing off to our west in western Mass and western Connecticut, and that's the way the weather moves in from. So we're going to be watching increasing clouds through the later part of the day. We're going to stay dry through the afternoon and into the evening hours, but you can see by about 7 or 8 o'clock, those clouds are really beginning to thicken up. Overnight, our temperatures will hover around freezing. We have some precipitation moving in. Last night, we saw all rain, but tonight, with temperatures closer to freezing, there will be some spots to see some light snow showers coming through very briefly, very quickly, but enough to lead to some slick conditions by early tomorrow. I'll have a look at your full forecast in just a few minutes. Doreen? See, thank you. And in political news today, Rhode Island Governor Dan McKee is marking one year in office today. The governor's been busy, too, reading to first graders in Warwick this morning and announcing a new grant program in Providence. He's also headed to Newport to tour affordable housing at 2. McKee is running for a full term in office, touting his work to get Rhode Islanders vaccinated. You're coming in in a time frame where uh, there was no playbook for what I was doing, right? A lieutenant governor coming into a governor's office in such circumstances that were really in crisis mode. ABC 6 News reporter Dominique Turner spoke with McKee one-on-one -on -one to mark the occasion. We'll bring that to you tonight, starting on ABC 6 News first at 4. And a new candidate is throwing her hat into the ring for Bristol County District Attorney. Former Assistant DA Shannon McMahon has announced her plans to run for the seat. The Swansea native says she wants to rebuild the community's relationship with the police and reduce the amount of repeat offenders in the community. DA Thomas Quinn has already announced that he will be seeking a third term. Still to come here at noon, a big vote this weekend in Bristol County regarding the possible construction of a new technical school, the superintendent's pitch. Plus, a tweak to the mask policy at Brown University will tell you who can now shed those face coverings if they so choose. That's all coming up.
Back with more on our schools now. Voters in Bristol County have a big decision this weekend on the future of a new technical campus. The Bristol Plymouth Regional Technical School is looking to build a new school that comes at a $305 million price tag. ABC 6 News reporter Laura Puglisi spoke to the superintendent about what residents need to know. Well, the building was built 50 years ago. The superintendent says there are a ton of issues, but the decision will ultimately be up to the voters here. The cost split between seven district communities. Towns in Bristol County are set to vote on building a new regional vote tech school. If approved, the Bristol Plymouth Regional Tech School will change from this to this. Our, our school is undersized. Uh, was built for 700, you know, close to 780 students. We now have a little over 1330. Uh, we're tight. We've been building outside buildings, but it's now at the point where we, we no longer can, uh, it's difficult to function that way. Superintendent Alex Magalhaes says it's clear there's a need for change. The current plan, approved by the Massachusetts School Building Authority, would pay for a brand new school building. The campus would be built next to the existing one, allowing for students to still learn while under construction. The price tag, $305 million. $125 million of that would be paid from a grant, the rest through tax increases. I can't tell them to vote yes, I can't tell them to vote no. It's going to be their decision. Uh, it's their tax dollars. I can just say that if you vote yes, you're accepting a $125 million um, grant from the MSBA, money that they've already paid for. And giving up this up, you're just giving up $125 million to some other district that will take over. If voters decide no, the school will move forward with repairs to the old building. The superintendent says those don't address the issue of overcrowding. Those repairs come in at $137 million, also on taxpayers to fund. One way or the other, we're going to have to do something. Either we go with the 137 a million dollars uh, just fixing the building and I, I, I can say that in, in the future this building is going to need some sort of addition to it. Again, the polls open on Saturday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. We'll put all of those locations up on our website at abc6.com. Reporting in Taunton, I'm Laura Puglisi, ABC 6 News. Laura, thank you. We did reach out to representatives for the No on BP group to hear their side of the story. We did not hear back, but if we do, we'll bring that to you tomorrow on the News at Noon. And Brown University is making changes to its indoor mask mandate. Professors will now be able to go mask free for lectures. Those students need to stay masked up. Student performers for things like theater productions or musical performances can also drop the mask. And the same goes for those participating in indoor athletic activity. Those who haven't received a booster dose, if eligible, are not allowed to remove the mask. Still to come here at noon, as the situation intensifies in Ukraine, a local church here at home dedicating today's Ash Wednesday service to the people there. I'll tell you all about that coming up right after this.
Well, today is Ash Wednesday, the beginning of the Lenten season, the 40 days before Easter Sunday when Christians fast, repent, and reflect. Bishop Thomas Tobin is presiding over Mass right now at the Cathedral of Saints Peter and Paul in Providence. After the service, attendees can receive ashes on their forehead. The ashes are from Palm Sunday palms, which are burned and blessed. And St. Pius Church in Providence's Elmhurst neighborhood is dedicating its Ash Wednesday Mass to prayer for the people of Ukraine. The parish posted on Facebook saying Pope Francis asked that special consideration be given to the war-torn country. St. Pius is a Dominican Catholic parish that also ministers to Brown University students. And now, your ABC6 Storm Tracker weather with meteorologist Chelsea Priest. That's a really nice early March day out there. We have perfect sunshine, just a few clouds coming in and out of the area, and those temperatures have come up into the mid 30s. Overall, we started the day fairly mild. Most of us were well into the 30s to start the day, which is way above average. And now we're seeing temperatures well into the 40s in most locations, which is also slightly above average for this time of year. 46 in Providence, 43 in Newport, 46 in New Bedford right now, 40 in Smithfield, a little bit cooler for our inland spots, but all of us running warmer right now compared to where we were yesterday yesterday at this time. It's a nice little warm up outside this afternoon. Typically warmest temp of the day for March 2nd is 44 degrees. So we are slightly above that right now. And that's even with that breeze coming in from the northwest that we're dealing with today. Typically the northwest breeze keeps things a bit cooler, but we have so much sunshine outside and it's certainly keeping us a little bit warmer as we head into the afternoon. The breeze is coming in about 5 to 15 miles per hour. It makes us feel a few degrees cooler, but even the feel like temperatures aren't too bad uh, for this time of year. The trend for today Keeps us in the mid 40s out there. We have a little cool down as we head through tomorrow and Friday. Temperatures will be in the mid to upper 30s. We have a little front that comes through overnight. It's going to bring us some scattered rain showers and some scattered snow showers in spots. I'll have a look at that future cast in just a second. That comes through. We stay chilly as we head through Thursday and Friday, but from there, we should start to warm up a bit. On Saturday, we'll make it into the mid 40s, and we have 50s in the forecast for Sunday and Monday at times close to 60 degrees and it looks like we moderate into next week and those really cold days become less and less around the area as we head into of course the month of March. Satellite radar image shows you dry conditions outside sunshine right now. That being said there's already some clouds just off to our west and we're going to be watching some clouds start to roll in through the later part of the afternoon and into the evening hours. Much wider view shows you this little bit of snow over the Great Lakes and we're going to see that kind of stream in to southern New England as we head through tonight. For a lot of us, we stay above freezing and it's rain overnight, but there are going to be some locations that do pick up some light snow. A coating is what we're talking about, and that's going to be on cold surfaces, but it's enough that it may lead to some slick spots tomorrow morning for the morning commute. 7 o'clock, we are still dry. Those clouds increase. 11 o'clock, still dry. We're talking about maybe 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. You start to see some light snow for the inland spots, rain along the coastline. 4 a.m., you're still seeing that snow for our inland locations, rain along the coast. And then by about 6 or 7 o'clock, all of that pushes offshore. So it's in and out within a couple of hours. There may be a little coating in spots, especially in northwest Rhode Island. That may lead to some slick conditions with temperatures down to the low 30s by tomorrow morning. But all in all, we get back into sunshine pretty quickly. And it's a chilly day tomorrow, but that sun will melt uh, whatever is slick outside. And we'll continue to see sunshine and cool temperatures as we head into Friday. Today is mainly sunny. Temps are in the mid to upper 40s outside with the breeze out of the northwest. Tonight, again, in the very early morning hours, we're dry through at least midnight. 1, 2 o'clock, you get some light rain, some light snow coming in. I'll have to watch for some icy spots because by tomorrow morning, I would say by about 7 or 8 o'clock, we're completely dry. We're clearing out. Temperatures will be in the upper 30s. And then on Friday, we wake up in the teens. Friday afternoon is chilly with temperatures only in the mid-30s, but will gradually warm into the weekend. We do have some rain in the forecast Sunday into Monday. Doreen? All right, Chelsea, thank you. And a new big screen debuts tonight at the Warwick Showcase Cinema on Quaker Lane, just in time for that new Batman movie. The movie is already tracking to open with well over $100 million in sales. Robert Pattinson fights the criminal element of Gotham City in this version of the Batman. Well, coming up, a toast for peace, a local restaurant's gesture in support of Ukraine. And a Russian retreat, a growing list of companies and businesses stepping in and shutting down dealings with Russia.
A local restaurant is toasting for peace in Ukraine. Bellini Providence inside the Beatrice Hotel downtown is stocking up on Namirov vodka, which comes from Ukraine, allowing customers to order cocktails with the spirit. Owner Joe Paolino is a former U.S. ambassador, and he says it's a small gesture to express support for the Ukrainian people. The restaurant does not sell Russian vodka. And some of the world's biggest companies are saying no to Russia. Apple says it's stopping the sales of its products, including iPhones in Russia. Harley Davidson suspending shipments of its bikes into Russia and Ford suspending operations there. Google has also dropped Russian state publishers from its news feed. And some big Hollywood movies won't reach Russian theaters. Warner Brothers has paused release of The Batman. Turning Red and other Disney films won't play for now in Russia either. Paramount has pulled The Lost City and Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Sony is holding back Morbius and Universal has halted its Russian releases, beginning with Ambulance and DreamWorks, The Bad Guys. And the Cannes Film Festival is barring official Russian delegations and anyone linked to the Russian government. The festival says unless the Russian invasion ends with conditions acceptable to Ukraine, they are not welcome to the 2022 edition in May. And Airbnb is offering temporary housing to about 100,000 Ukrainian refugees. The company says funds for the stays will come from Airbnb's refugee fund alongside assistance from hosts. Airbnb says although this is just a short-term solution, it will work with governments to get people situated. Still to come, a seal of approval from Twisted Sister for Ukrainians to use their song as a battle cry. Plus, Chelsea has another look at your afternoon forecast right after this. Well, finally, this afternoon, Ukrainians have adopted the 80s hit. We're not going to take it as their battle cry against the Russian invasion. And Twisted Sisters Dee Snyder is 100% behind it. The rocker tweeted that his grandfather was Ukrainian and lived there before the country was taken over by the Soviet Union. And he says this cannot happen again. So he's giving it his seal of approval, Chelsea. Okay, then. Mm -hmm. I like it. We mm -hmm. are looking at a plenty of sunshine outside this afternoon. Temperatures well into the 40s, topping out in the mid to upper 40s. Overnight, we do have some rain and some light snow that'll move through into the very, very early hours of tomorrow morning. There may be a few slick spots out there, so just be mindful of that. I would say by 7 or 8 o'clock, we're already tapping into sunshine. We'll clear out with temperatures in the upper 30s and then overnight into Friday down to the teens with highs on Friday only in the mid 30s a little bit warmer as we head through the weekend. Doreen? All right, Chelsea, thank you. And thank you for joining us for the news at noon. The news continues first at four. Have a great day, everybody.